atresia in biology means there is a possibility of a tubular structure not opening up something which is developmental something which is more commonly seen in two at least important cases in clinical scenario one of them is vaginal atresia other one we commonly hear is esophageal atresia but these are very uncommon kind of phenomena if as a urologist as a reconstructive urologist i look into this subject of vaginal atresia we need to wake up to this phenomena that in vaginal atresia the deformity or an abnormality or a disorder of the genital tract which could happen in states that is not picked up many a times because the presentation could actually only happen at times when uh, the child is actually in the age group of puberty so a delayed diagnosis of a congenital abnormality would happen for no plausible explanations uh, from the medical fraternity or otherwise from the parentage is where vaginal atresia where a low portion of the vagina typically one third to one fifth may actually be fibrous may be absent may not have opened up into a tubular structure of the vagina whereas the mullerian structures upstairs the cervix and the and the uterus may be well developed so in a vaginal atresia a child may present with a possibility of monthly lower abdominal pains at the age of between 11 to 15 years that's a time that she develops puberty and the menstrual cycles do start she has got a discomfort and a pain which comes a few days quite significant unless it's a very uh, identifiable kind of a situation in a scenario where a parent reports or identifies herself it may be missed out and there could be few number of cycles which must have gone anything between 3 5 or 15 where the abdomen would be swollen with a lower abdominal fullness where the hematometra may develop and there could be um, the fullness of the fallopian tubes and the ovaries the entire thing could be quite tense and a dull ache which some of the children are presented with to us in the series of cases that we have treated and operated and finally cured vaginal atresia is something where we need to wake up to a phenomena where things have happened where there is an organ which is atretic and probably completely absent there is also an entity called transverse vaginal septum where the lower vagina is actually intact there is a thick septum or a fibrous septum which is very close to the upper vagina and therefore closes it from the cervix and therefore menstrual periods may still not be able to come down but out there in the transverse vaginal septum uh, the lower vagina is intact whereas in vaginal atresia sometimes the entire aspect from the perineum from the level of the hymen all the way up to the level of cervix may be fibrous or may be completely absent vaginal atresia presentation therefore is at the level in the age group of puberty and beyond where a woman may have a girl may have difficulty um, in the lower abdomen of discomforts which is akin to a dysmenorrhea akin to a discomfort of blood collecting into a cavity which is pooling up which is the endometrial cavity patients are presented anything between 12 to 15 years or even 12 to 18 years with vaginal atresia with large abdominal masses and it's all picked up by an imaging evaluation an ultrasound showing a large uterus uterine mass with a hematometra by an mri which talks about the various mullerian structures of normality by a rectal examination because you can't do a vaginal examination the hymen is uh, absent and the perineum is closed in the region of a possible uh, hymen or vaginal opening rectal examination shows a large structure anterior the entire treatment of this is based upon whether it's a transverse vaginal septum uh, whether it's a uh, um, uterine abnormality to combine with a vaginal abnormality or is just an absence of vagina the vaginal uh, length that is required in such patients is almost always an adult length that we need to create and so the test of time the technique that we do back at kokla in hospital in the department of urology is a uh, uh, ileal or a sigmoid segment more commonly sigmoid less commonly ileal but it is basically an intestinal segment which is replacing the tube that is atretic or not formed over the last um, 8 to 10 years that is cases have been taken over from different parts of the country in the world we have looked at primary and secondary cases having been operated having had fistulae having had fibrosis and maybe the the treatment done has undergone a, a change where there has been fibrosis and there has been secondary changes and the segments have actually got obscured the treatment directly revolves around getting a cavity getting a tubular structure created which allows the monthly monthly menstrual periods to come down uh, the adult organ that we create close to anything between 12 to 15 cm though they are capable of a stretch the ileal segment or the sigmoid segment are now flaps these flaps are harvested in trap dominantly which on most of the occasions in vaginal atresia we do open surgery we go in mobilize the uterus both anteriorly and posteriorly anteriorly 
behind the bladder and posteriorly from the recto uh, uterine fold and go to the level which is the dependent most part of the face cervix that is actually packed up with blood, the thick blood which is contained inside. A proper cruciate incision allows us to open it there. And once the opening is created, you actually have all the blood drained out, the cavity collapsed, the fallopian tubes and the, the ovaries are then decompressed of this pent up situation over months of menstrual bleed or maybe sometimes years. Once having done that, we need to have this harvested segment of intestine which has been brought down. That's a challenge where the harvested segment should be almost always having two blood supplies. That means it's harvested on two major vascular pedicles so that we're able to bring it down. And that assessment completely is on the realm of a reconstructive urologist, uh, somebody who gets to see these kind of congenital anomalies at a different age group of adolescents. That's where you will not give an organ, which is a child's organ, but you give an adult organ because the child is going to grow. And this organ's growth, longitudinally may be a little stretch, but transversely may not happen. And therefore you created an organ with this pedicle coming in, loosely sitting in that important uh, location, which is in between the bladder in front, uh, the urethra in front and the rectum behind. And you have given a kind of a lease where the pedicle is not stretched. You're given an organ which is capable enough of dissension. And that is done by volume calibration by the parent initially and later on by the girl child. Who knows how to volume calibrate and keep this healthy, intact, capable around. It's always shrouded that uh, these kind of intestinal segments have a lot of mucus production, which is not true. 12 to 15 centimeter of an adult vagina, which is a normal length that women may have, is good enough for us to communicate an adult organ. And the kind of mucus production only sometimes soils the undergarments. In the early days, obviously, yes, from where there was nothing but atritic segment all through, you have an adult organ which has got a secretion, obviously, from the mucosal lining of an organ that is capable of undergoing a gradual metaplasia as time goes by, as calibration dilatation and various volume dilatations right to the coitus happens in adulthood. Many of these patients have actually undergone their treatments in various cities and various places in the childhood and have come back for a secondary repair. Secondary repair because various techniques are adopted where skin grafts and adopted where various kind of peritoneal flaps are found. So don't stand a test of time. Out here, to bring about a completion of the genital tract, the uterus and the cervix community is maintained by giving them a segment, which finally is a segment that takes care of them, where the uh, menstrual blood, though tardy, you may find, in my experience, most of these patients have menstruation anything between five to seven days. Uh, that means the segment which is now vagina is a tardy kind of a segment, though it has a kind of peristaltic activity, which is more passive than active compared to the, the vagina of an adult woman, where there's a contraction activity happening from the perineal muscles out here. It's a tubular structure, which actually is a conduit. It works basically both for a reproductive function and sexual function. The reproductive function is more to do a possible artificial reproductive technique, uh, implantation as an intrauterine insemination through the anastomosis, which is a psychovaginal anastomosis. Obviously, keeping the patulous patent introitus, which is all done by a calibration and a volume dilatation. So these are very focused parents and focused individuals who come in from various parts of the country of the world. A very different and a very difficult entity. We may call it uncon, but uh, maybe the textbooks say that it's as common as one in 20,000 to one in 40,000 live female births. Therefore, it may not be so uncommon. The problem is if we have not taken the right approach to treat them, not counsel them, not taken it to the highest possible level of reconstruction, giving them an adult organ, the organ that deserves to possibly be then an adult organ which could be calibrated, dilated, and felt confident about, then you possibly miss out the important aspect of this treatment. Transfer awareness septum also requires an open surgery. People have attempted laparoscopically, but remember, minimally invasive therapy in these kind of entities where you're going to do a reconstruction which would stand test of time, test to adulthood and beyond, actually needs to be done very, very thoroughly because it's it's encompassed deep inside the pelvis where your organ or your instruments cannot reach all the time. You will have to go and do an open job. You do a job which stands once and for all. You might have a chance to do a second job. But out here, as we see more and more of redo surgeries coming in on both vaginal atresia, as well as other aspects of this genital abnormality in the vagina, in children, in young girls, who possibly have got shortening, various kinds of surgeries done, fibrosis, possibly have not adhered to the counseling given by my respected colleagues, gynecologists and urologists, where we attempt to inform them that volume calibration, later on a coital calibration, are the ways to keep this track which is being created in a place there where, where there was no organ there before. So friends, it's a challenge. It, it actually continues to be a challenge all the time because organ deficiencies, which are external, which probably would convert a girl child into her womanhood, are important aspects to be created in time. And the in time would only happen irrespective of what is in adolescence and adulthood. An entity beyond this 
where there is complete mullery and aplasia, where there is no mullery in structures in the way of absence of cervix and the uterus, which is seen as a case of um, MRK syndrome, a rogatensky kastrohauser syndrome is an important aspect that we deal with. Out there, a woman who has no menstrual periods and has no abdominal discomfort and pain of a monthly menstrual period, as happens in vaginal atresia, there's all the more a different kind of a sullen atmosphere. So, MRK syndrome, where there's absence of all Mullerian structures, obviously absence of vagina too, are, are very complex kind of patients. You know? And they are sometimes presenting even in adulthood. Women who we recently have treated are age groups of 21, 24, 25, even 27, who actually would now like to become a woman that they have got ovaries which are completely functional. And they grow up with secondary sexual characters where there's nothing which can differentiate them from women who have got a uterus, cervix, and vagina, except that they have got absent menstrual periods. I think it has possibly forgotten in the dream. That is something which we need to really pick up. MRK syndrome is sadly another kind of a congenital abnormality, which is been rated as much as one in 20 to 40,000 live births. Uh, I don't get to see so many, though we happen to be doing, and uh, patients are referred by our colleague urologists, our colleague pediatricians, our colleague gynecologists from this part of the world. We get to see many of them coming in. So in the last decade or so at the Kokilab and Dhirubhaya Mani Hospital, in reconstructive uroandrology segments where we have looked at female urology with a lot of, uh, you know, uh, understanding because the subject obviously needs uh, a lot of care and caregivers' importance is equally important because many of these women are getting into womanhood by creation of an organ which is missing. It is extremely important for us to look at what are the best ways forward, what are the fruitful ways forward where we can do it. And I personally feel that this is somewhere where we need to look at reconstruction to the highest possible level. Creating something that is stand the test of time, continue involving the parents and later on the caregivers, uh, the patient itself who is probably a young girl and a child and probably grown up into her adulthood, to know that this is something which is treatable and doable to the highest possible level. Friends, vaginal atresia, MRK syndrome are challenges which we deal. And we look at these not getting a redo chance around, which is getting more and more common. The best attempt still would be an intestinal segment. The various metaplastic changes which happen in these kind of long segments, which are adult organs, gradually brings about only a lubrication without much wetness in the undergarment. And you have the best of the segments with the best vascular supply, which becomes an adult organ. At least in vaginal artery, say you have a tubular structure, which subserves the entire function of this tube called vagina. So with the menstrual blood can come down and she's a confident woman with the parents now comfortable completely regarding her childhood and development towards a woman. MRK syndrome, the choices are there to create an organ which probably makes her the woman of the kind that she deserves to be, that she has got the ovaries. In these kind of situations, maybe you try and transplant in future, maybe uh, adoption could be a way forward. But in cases of vaginal atresia, uh, artificial insemination techniques and a cesarean section could be the order of the day in future. And this young girl with an absent organ which was not gifted to her during her childhood has actually become now a complete woman and could develop the best possible ways of, you know, finding her completely comfortable because her organ is given by a surgeon across on the table. So these are all improvisations and reconstructive logic to very high levels, which we need to take forward. Thank you.